Hey everyone, Tony here. And this time I wanna talk about AI image generation. There's a lot of buzz going around it, especially if you've been following along like at Ars Technica and other places. And it really is some cool technology. And legality wise, I'm not touching that today. But I wanna go over some options on how you can use AI image generation to create your own images and have some and have fun with it. Don't, please don't be like the person going out and, and submitting it to the state fair. Just, just play around with it, have some fun. There are several options available. One of them is probably the most popular or the most talked about is Dolly 2. It just opened up for anybody to use. It is a paid service. So every time you want to run a, you want to generate an image, it will cost you money. If you want to try something else and you're in the Discord world, there is Midjourney. So you can go to their Discord server or I think you can set it up so you can have a channel or something in your own Discord server where you can send prompts back and forth to Midjourney. It is it's really interesting because it will give you back multiple images and then you can like pick one image and then re-roll it to see if you can make it better. It's, it's really nice. There's also Dream Studio from Stability AI. This is again a free, a paid service. You do get the ability to generate 200 images for free first before you have to start paying. And finally, there's Stable Diffusion, which you can go here to Hugging Face SEO and, and, and check it out and try it. There is a queue for when you go to run a Stable Diffusion demo. So it may take several minutes for your for your prompt to actually be taken to be used. Or what I'm going to talk about is running Stable Diffusion on your computer locally. Because you can do that. It's open source software. It's free. You can download it from GitHub. And all you need is just some time and, and, and the ability to get it set up. But there's a catch. You have to have an NVIDIA GPU to run Stable Diffusion on your computer. Background for this is it uses the PyTorch framework, and most of the PyTorch was conceived around NVIDIA's CUDA API. You can run PyTorch on your CPU, but out of the box, Stable Diffusion is not written to do that. Luckily, there's people in, in the community who have made modifications to Stable Diffusion, so we can run it on CPU, and that's what I want to show today. With that, let's get into it. Okay, so there's four things you need to get Stable Diffusion running on your computer. First, you need to have you need to install Git. Git is version control software used by developers, so they can take like snapshots of their code as they develop it, and then they can see changes over time and see what changed. Really simple to install on Windows. You just go here, download for Windows, download the exe, and then just click next, 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 next through the installer. Second, you're going to need Conda. Conda is, allows you to build isolated environments for Python. So if you're somebody who writes Python a lot and you have, and you have multiple projects, you may have projects that have, they have conflicts. Like one, like one project requires Python 3.6, the other one requires 3.10, plus these five other packages that don't work in 3.6. With Conda, we can build environments for each one of those projects and not have to worry about conflicts. In my demo, I'm using Miniconda because it's it's pretty small. It's easy to install. You can install the full Anaconda software. It's like 700 meg download. This is a tenth the size. And finally, you're going to need the weights from Stable Diffusion to actually, that's part of the model stuff that, it, that, it need, that you need to give it. Now, this is hosted over at, at huggingface.co and you will need an account to download the weights. In fact, if I go to this page on a private browser, you'll see why. It says you need to agree to share your contact information to access this model. So it's simple, it's free. You don't have to give any, any credit card information. They just need an email address, that's it. And that comes from your sign up. So just go over here, sign up for, for an account at huggingface.co. And once you're logged in, and you come back here to this page, there'll be a link down here at the bottom that says, yes, Here's my here. Yes, accept my info so I can download the stuff. So the weights I'm going to be using is the 1.4 model. And it's this file right here. That file is about it's just over four and a half gigabytes in size. If you want, you can use the full EMA model weights. It's almost eight gigabytes in size. So just know that when you go to download this, they're, they're pretty big files. Finally, we need Stable Diffusion itself. So that's hosted at GitHub by Compiz. 
and this is everything we need to get this plus the the weights file is everything we need to get stable diffusion running our on our computer we do need to make some file modifications but it's all will it will all be automated using uh git so first thing we're going to do is launch our conda environment so anaconda prompt you'll see this in your start menu after you've installed it whoop wrong size there we go now you can see it and i've already downloaded the weights here i've got a folder sd demo and here's the weight file that we downloaded again oh it's four mega it's four gigs in size not four and a half so, carry on so i'm going to change to that directory and now i'm going to download the repo from github so that is done by going back to github i'm going to click on code and i want to copy this url here copied here type in git clone and again we're just downloading that that file that file which is actually the repo itself it's going to download and extract it and it's done not that there's not that many files it doesn't take very long now you see i have a folder called stable diffusion which is the exact same name as the project go into stable diffusion and now let's modify the files we need so we can run Stable Diffusion on a CPU. Again, this has already been accomplished for us by the community. If you go over here and you look at the pull request of Stable Diffusion, there is one for allowing your CPU to run on Windows CUDA devices detected. And the people, the people behind this, they modified seven files. It was literally a lot of if statements, like if CUDA, run CUDA. If not, and then if, if there wasn't, then don't do anything. So. Rather than us going through each one of these files to make the changes ourselves, we can download this pull request and apply it to our local copy of Stable Diffusion. And again, we're going to do that using git. So git fetch origin. So we're going to get our pool and we need to know what pool number it is. In this case, it is pool number 56. So 56 add. and now I'm going to put this into a what get what get calls calls a branch locally so we can actually keep the files separate from from what we downloaded originally so I'm just going to call that the branch name PR56 pull request okay so now we have downloaded it and now we're going to I'm going to apply those changes to the local copy of Stable Diffusion. So what this is doing is it's taking these seven, these files that's changed and applying them to our local copy automatically. We don't have to go in and, and open up when Notepad or Notepad++ or something and change these files. This will do it for our, this will do it for us. So I'm gonna do git, check out PR56 for the pool the branch I just created. And that's it, it's done. So now, we've modified Stable Diffusion to work with running on a CPU. Next step, and we're just gonna go back to GitHub page and we go down here to instructions, requirements. And so what we're gonna do now is actually create a new Conda environment for Stable Diffusion. And they and developers have made this easy for us because they have this environment file that does all the setup for us. So it, it downloads what uh, channels we need and then what dependencies it needs for everything to work. I go back here and I'm just gonna copy this command for conda, paste it here, run. And now this is going to go set up the environment and download all the dependencies we need. This is gonna take probably a couple minutes. Okay. So we've downloaded and installed all the dependencies for Stable Diffusion, and that on my computer took about three, four minutes. Go back to the GitHub page, and now we're going to actually activate the Python environment in Conda. You can see here to activate this environment, use Conda activate LDM. All right, you can see that the prefix there changed from base to LDM. Okay, next part of the setup. We go back over here and it talks about stuff but basically we need to take our model file 
and copy it into create a folder and, and copy it over there. So I'm gonna copy this. Go over to Stable Diffusion, Models, LDM, create a new folder called Stable Diffusion V1. I'm going to copy our file in there, the weights, and we'll call it Model. I think it's Model, right? Yeah, Model. And then finally, with all that done, we should be able to run a text to image generation with Stable Diffusion on my CPU. This might screw up my frame rate, so we'll see what happens. And just because, again, this is going to be very slow on a CPU, well, it, and it depends on the CPU. My computer here is very old, very old. It's got a Skylight processor in it, and it takes like it runs each iteration, each step takes about 16, 17 seconds. On my framework laptop here, that same job takes about six seconds per iteration. So again, your mileage will vary. So to help me do this faster, I'm gonna add a flag, because if you go back over here to GitHub, there's all these different options you can put in here. I wanna change my sample size yeah, I'm going to change my sample size from the default, which I think is four or maybe three. I don't know. I'm going to change it down to one. So it'll only generate one. Actually, it's going to generate two images. I'm not sure why. So we're going to generate one image. I'm going to copy out in samples. And I'm probably going to skip the grid. We'll do that as well. One. Skip. Grid. I think that's correct. Okay, and that's that's it. So now, hit run. This is going to start running through the process of actually generating an image from this prompt. So the prompt is a photograph of an astronaut riding a horse. And let's see what we get. Well, that took longer than expected. You look here, you can see that with the options I, I, I picked, it took 20 seconds per iteration to generate the image. So total time, like 17, 17 minutes. Again, this is gonna vary based on your CPU. If you've got an old outdated CPU, like my desktop here does, it's gonna take forever. Again, I've got a framework here with a i7-1260P and it can do the same job in I think like six to eight seconds per iteration. So your your mileage is going to your mileage is definitely going to vary. Let's go see what we got. So if I go back here to our stable diffusion folder, there's now a new folder called outputs, and we can go in here. We can say text image samples, and if I had left if I hadn't added that grid setting. It would be actually a, a like a two by two or four by four image of all the pictures it generated. So we'll just go here to samples and looky there, we have an astronaut riding a horse. <laughs> and we have another astronaut riding a horse. Looks like trying to, and the horse has five legs. Not every image is going to be perfect out of stable diffusion. You want to have these anomalies here, like, like the leg, like the leg right there. Yep. That's just the way it is with this AI image generation. But you can just run through multiple iterations. If you want, you can actually change the seed. So the seed is what is where the noise starts for when it starts building the image. And by default, it picks seed 42, I think. It's going way back up here. I'm not gonna try and find it right now because of, of my zoomed in window. But I think by default, the, the seed number is, is 42. So if you go down here and you add a seed a, a seed number, and this can be like between one and two to the 30 second power, it's, it's a big number. You can give it the exact same prompt, the exact same settings, but when that seed number is different, you'll get a completely different image. And it's also useful if you wanted to share out prompts and allow people to generate Im the same image themselves. 
you can go in here. You can give, you can share somebody the, all the settings here, and if they took Stable Diffusion over to, on their system, they can regenerate that same that same image. That's all I got for you today, guys. I am working on another video, so if you do have an AMD graphics card, it is possible to run a version of Stable Diffusion on that on Windows. So I'm working on that right now, and you'll be able to see that soon. I'll have it down in the description, wherever that is these days. I know sometimes it's over here, sometimes it's down there, maybe in the comments. And until next time, have fun.